Hi, and welcome to the Richmond Public Library's tutorial on using Octopi with your 3D printer. If you've ever wanted to make your 3D printer accessible via your internet connection so that you can be sitting at your computer, setting up your files, and then just sending it to the printer, Octopi is for you. In order to use Octopi, you are going to need some equipment. We'll get into that a little bit later. And you're also going to have to download a file from the website Octopi, which I will also show you. For this tutorial, I'll be using an Ultimaker 2 Plus, because that's the printer that we have at Richmond Public Library, and I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 3B. The first thing you're going to do is open up a web browser and go to the Octopi website. And you can either Google it, just as I did, or you can go to octoprint.org. This is a, a type of software that is called open source. And open source means that it's free, you don't have to pay for it, and people work, uh, work at this uh, based on donations. We're going to download the stable version of it. On this website, you can also see some really great instructions for setting up Octopi. There's a really good video. So after this tutorial, if you're still confused, definitely watch their video. And depending upon what kind of system you're using, if it's Linux, Windows, or Mac, you will have slightly different looking um, interface. However, I've done this on a Mac, I've done this on a PC, and I have done this on a Linux, and it's all pretty much the same. So I will be using a Linux on a MacBook Air uh, 2013. And the first thing that I'm going to do is download the stable version of Octopi. Click the link and download your image file to your download folder or any folder that you wish. Just remember where you have downloaded it. That's the important part. And we're going to save that for a later step. You will need another program to load that file onto your mini USB, which I will also show you how to download. Going back to Google, we are going to look for a program called Bellina etcher and this is the program that we're going to use to flash the image file that we just downloaded onto the mini USB. So on this website you will choose which operating system you are using. So for example I'm using Linux so that's the one that I'm going to download and then once the download is complete I am going to run this program and I'm going to use it to flash my USB. Our next step will be to flash the USB with the program I just showed you how to download, Bellina Etcher. You're going to click Flash from File, which will bring up your window for choosing where you saved your image file. And then after that, you will need to select your target. And your target is going to be your mini USB. And it will probably show up as a as mass storage device, unless you've given it a better name than I did. And then you select it and then just click flash. Mine is going to go much much faster than what yours is going to go because I've sped up the video so just be patient go get a cup of coffee watch a TV show let it do its thing and come back as soon as it's finished. Some equipment that you're going to need now is your Raspberry Pi, your screen for viewing which could just be your TV screen with an HDMI cable or it could be like what you see with, with us, where you have a sp special screen for Raspberry Pis. And you're also going to need a keyboard for initial setup. You won't need the keyboard every time you turn on Octopi, but you are going to need it for initial setup, for connecting it to your internet, and for possibly changing the password. You will now boot up your Raspberry Pi simply by plugging in the Raspberry Pi. It will start automatically. and we just wait and of course you will see again that mine will boot up much faster than yours does but that's only because I've sped up the video I have not sped up the actual booting up process now you will need to log in the default name for Octopi is Pi and the default password is Raspberry you will want to change that your next step is to go to sudo raspberry config 
and to your system to change your wireless settings. Change it to your wireless network, enter in your password, and connect your Octopi to your internet. On the main screen, you will also find an IP address. You'll want to write that address down because that will be the address that you log into your Octopi through your web browser. The first time that you log in, you'll be asked to go through the setup wizard. The setup wizard will set up your login information, your password, and ask you a few questions about how you would like Octopi to run. So make sure you read through all of the documentation and to the questions as they pertain to you, and then Octopi will be set up. Access control is your login information, so make sure they use a login name and password combination that is unique to you and you're going to remember. Configure anonymous usage tracking. This is where you can decide whether or not you would like to share your information with Octopi. Configure the connectivity check. So for this, you want to say yes. Configure plugin blacklist processing. I also configure this as yes, because if there's any plugins that don't work, then I want to make sure that I know. Setting up your printer profile, I just click yes, it seems to work for my printer, but if something doesn't work, then you want to check the documentation for your specific printer. Remember that I'm setting this up for an Ultimaker 2 Plus. My next step is going to be to take a printer cable, connect to my Raspberry Pi, and then to the printer, and we are all set. Now I can connect my Octopi to my 3D printer. The next step will be to set up Cura to work with Octopi. Before Cura will work with Octopi, you'll have to go to the marketplace and download Octoprint Connection. This is a free download that you'll install, quit Cura, and then start it over again. And then when we go to the printer connection settings, we're going to make just a couple of changes. The first change for the Ultimaker printer is going to be to change the type of G code that it uses. And I'm going to change this to RepRap. I looked this up specific for the Ultimaker 2, and that seems to be what works with Octopi. However, if you're running a 3D printer that uses Marlin, then you probably won't have to make any changes at all. I would suggest looking up the documentation for your specific printer before continuing ahead. The next thing we're going to do is to connect to Octoprint. So now you'll find in your printer settings an Octoprint button. By pressing Octoprint, it will bring up a menu and you're going to give it a name. I'm going to call mine Octoprint. And then you will use that IP address to connect it to Octoprint running on your Raspberry Pi. To connect Cura to Octopi, you're going to need the global API key. If your Raspberry Pi is running and Octopi is set up correctly, you should be able to just click the request key and it should pop up. If it doesn't pop up, you can go into your Octopi through your web browser and you can first check to make sure that your printer is connected. So make sure that you have uh, pressed the connect button. And you can also click on the settings tab up at the top right. That looks like a little wrench. And once you do that, you will look on the menu for API and this will give you the global API key. You can copy and then paste it into Cura as well. You can now set up your file in Cura the same way that you would normally except this time after you've sliced the file instead of sending it to either an SD card you are going to instead send it directly to Octoprint. You can even click on the monitor tab in Cura and if you have a camera attached to your Raspberry Pi then you can monitor it through Cura. You can also monitor it through Octopi and you can do a time-lapse video which I will show you in just a moment. You can monitor your print through Octopi using your web browser or you can also monitor it through a camera that is attached to your Raspberry Pi. If you're going to use a camera on your Raspberry Pi with time-lapse, you need to set that up first before you start printing. You can set up your time-lapse mode for how quickly you'd like the time-lapse to be or how slow you'd like it to be by changing the numbers in these boxes. 
When your time lapses are finished, they will show up under finished time lapses. It's important to remember that these are saved to the Raspberry Pi, they are not saved to your computer. So if you would like to save them to your computer, you will notice that there are action items over on the right hand side. You can either delete with the trash can, you can download with the arrow down, or you can view the time lapse with the camera. But I found that that doesn't work very well, so I, I choose to download and then view. Your Octopi is now set up. You can send your print to Octopi through Kira, and then you can watch your time lapse video. However, if you do use time lapse, do remember that you have to allow time for your Raspberry Pi to render that video. So you can shut down your computer, but don't shut down your Raspberry Pi. Thank you for tuning in, and happy 3D printing.